Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. In this process, you could actually see how my thought process was working, how I think about putting in commands and functions and how to arrange the program. And hopefully it'll give you some insight into sort of how to arrange functions. I still don't think that I have this all right. I'm not sure if I want to do it in this way because I could, for the read write, I could just put set read write pin and then put in read or write. But it's a little bit more difficult to understand how to do that as a person going into the main and just trying to do it for the first time. If they take a look at the LCD and everything that's in here, setting it to read, setting it to write is a lot easier to understand than setting read write and then what to put inside of it as a parameter. So let's take a look and see what outputs to the, the LEDs when we do this. I just noticed uh, an area that might cause a problem. And in my previous programs, I would what I would do is I would do a volatile int for the i in this for loop. Because if I didn't do this, then they would optimize this whole thing out. I mean, wouldn't actually run it because when it does the co compiling of the program, if it doesn't think that this is a changing variable throughout the program, then it won't actually use it and it'll be optimized out of the program. So by making it volatile, it knows that it needs to keep that variable going in the program for the time delay. Okay, I just recompiled the program. There's no errors. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I've already run the program once, but I'm going to go ahead and do another flashing. I'm going to program the Mac controller again. Let's see that one more time. You can see that it went pretty fast. It was probably too fast for us to see it clearly. We can definitely see the enable LED flash on and off. So let's slow that down quite a bit and see if we can make it a little bit more discernible. And I'm going to add, I'm going to multiply these by two. So I'll do this 8,000 and I'll do this one, or 80,000, and I'll do this one 16,000. Let's try that and see if that works. Okay, and I'll reprogram it. Yeah, it's still pretty fast. So I'm going to add another zero. I'll go back to 40,000 and I'll make it 400,000. I'll go back to 80,000 and I'll add another zero for 800,000. I'm not sure if I compiled it before. Maybe not, let's see. Okay, that makes more sense. Good. So that was actually, it took a little while to do, but it wasn't that, it doesn't take, didn't take that long. I'm gonna flash the Mac controller again and watch it. So you can see that the, what is that first one? Okay, so the register select turns on and then you can see that the enable turned on and the, the byte was sent and then the enable turned off. So it looks like it works correctly. Just for my own purposes, I want to I want to show this um, in a, a loop. I'll probably pause it between the loop or the beginning and the end. I'll do it um, uh, 10 times or so. Just so I want to see it over and over again, just to make sure it works correctly. I'll put a time delay before it or after it actually, why not? There has to be a time delay after it anyway, so might as well do that. What's the time, no, not, not exact time delay. This may not even, I mean, we have to put this in the LCD 
And we'll probably change this because uh, this doesn't seem like it's LCD related, but we'll keep it in there anyway. And the time delay can be a million. Let's see what that does. It would be cool to to increment this every time. Like A, B, C, D. Let's see. We could do that. Car letter is equal to A and letter plus I. So this way the letter can be A and then it'll increment, it'll be B and then C, D, E, F till it exits this for loop. This while loop is here, it doesn't it's just keeping the, the microcontroller on and not exiting, exiting out of this. So let's go ahead and do this again and see what happens with the microcontroller. Hmm. Looks like it's working. Okay, looks like it's gotten to its, looks like it's gotten through the loop. So we should be able to go ahead and add the LCD. So let's go ahead and go back to the circuit and add the LCD. I'm gonna remove these two LEDs. We'll also remove these. Resistors. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the the LCD from pin 30 to pin 15. Okay, so we're going to need to find out where we're going to put a potentiometer. And all these tie strips are going to be reserved. And also we have these two pins here that are going to be brought over as the enable and the, actually the, the register select and the read write. The enable is actually coming from all the way over here. So I think the only place to put the, the potentiometer is, is over here. So let's go ahead and do that somewhere over here. Probably as close to these wires as possible so I can utilize as much of this board for other purposes later on. Okay. Takes a little bit of effort to put it in. This side still needs to be put in. We'll use the five volt option on the programmer. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. So we can see that we have the, the five volts just below the 3.3 volts. And I have the 3.3 volts right here. So we can just plug one more in and we'll have a five volt connection. Before I connect it to the breadboard, I'm gonna test it with the, with the voltmeter just to make sure it's outputting five volts. Now I'm gonna turn it to voltage. Okay, I got 5.14 volts, that's good. To convert my female header into a male, I'm just gonna take a header, even this out a little bit. I could just take this little plastic piece off, but. Probably just gonna plug it into the the potentiometer, one end of the potentiometer, and then I'll just take that, maybe one back. Before I connect the power, the five volts to the LCD, I'm gonna connect the ground coming from 31. I'm gonna connect this ground to the ground of the LCD so I know where the first pin is that we need to use because these two are not connected and this can confuse me on where to start, because I, I often think that this is the, the VSS pin or the ground pin, but the third pin is actually the, the, the real ground pin. 
So I'm just going to take a jumper and put it from this position, which is the 31 on the controller card, and that's the ground pin. And it's going to go to the ground pin of the LCD. I think that's the one. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to take the 31 ground and I'm going to connect it to the potentiometer. So the potentiometer will have a, a ground and a 5 volts. Okay, so now we have the potentiometer connected to ground to the 31 pin. So we have the 31 pin going to the potentiometer. We also have the same 31 pin going to this ground. I'm going to go ahead and connect the wiper pin here from the potentiometer to the V0, which is all the way over here. Okay, so now we have the wiper pin. See a little bit better here. You have the wiper pin connected to the, the V0 pin of the LCD. That will be now the 5 volt pin, the VDD, will be the next one. And we'll connect that one to the potentiometer lead here, which is also connected to the 5 volts. Okay, now for the 5 volts. Okay, so we wired up ground, 5 volts, and the V0. So we can actually turn this on and see if we can adjust the contrast. We'll probably just get a bunch of boxes along the display. So let's see if that works. Right now we don't see anything. So let's turn the potentiometer. There we go. So the contrast is working correctly. Thirty-three is our next pin we can connect, and that's going to be register select. So we can connect that over to the next pin here. Connect thirty-three to the RS pin. Uh, pin number thirty-four to the next pin. Uh, pin number thirty-four to the read-write pin. It looks a little bit like these two pins were connecting the camera angle, but it looks like it's pretty good. Okay, now we need to take all of these pins and connect them to these pins. So I'm going to take these out first. The enable will be connected from 35 to the enable pin. Now we're going to connect the data pins. D0 will be connected to pin number 36. D1 will be connected to pin number 37. D2 is connected to pin number 38. D3 is connected to pin number 39. D4 is connected, no, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, D0, D1, D2, D3. D4 is connected to pin number 30 to 40 actually. D5 is connected to pin number 41. And D6 is connected to pin number 42. And the final one, D7, is connected to pin number 43. Okay, so we have all the data pins connected to the D0 to D7, 